Hello and welcome to my latest uh, Neon tutorial and this time we're going to be covering the new slicer. Now this not only allows you to slice up your samples but it also has a nice little uh, warp mode which uh, allows you to uh, manipulate and mangle your slices. So sit back, stick the kettle on, grab some popcorn and let's go through this. All exciting stuff. So the first thing you should notice is this new uh, slice icon on the left toolbar. And when I click this icon, we get the slice bar, bar appear at the bottom of the screen. And by default, the manual edit mode is selected. Now in manual mode, we can um, draw slices just by dragging our finger across the display. And uh, once those slices have, have, have been drawn, we can resize them just by tapping on the either the start or end of the slice and just dragging left or right. Now if I add a second slice, uh, you'll notice we've got two and we can switch between them by just tapping on the slice and that's reflected by this control below. Now to delete a slice, we need to uh, change the uh, action to delete. And now we can just tap on a slice to delete it. Now generally you won't want to create your slices manually like that. So we have two other options and one is called regions. And that allows you to split your sample up into a fixed number of regions. And uh, from there, if we tap on any one of these regions, we go back to manual mode and we can resize them uh, as required. Now, if I change the action to preview, then when we tap on one of these slices, it will be previewed. And as you can see, there's a, a tiny bit of, uh, of region uh, 2, uh, which is sounding when we play region 1 and it's the same with region 3 there's a, a tiny bit of the region 4 appearing on the end and that can be adjusted simply and easily by selecting the relevant slice and then just dragging that end marker back a, a little bit uh, we might want to zoom in to do this but in this case we can see where the zero crossing is and that sounds perfect and now I can do the same with region 3 but this time I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see uh, that we get it accurately on that zero crossing uh, the more time you spend on this the better it will be but I think that's good enough for this example now later I'm going to be showing you how to trigger these remotely uh, but you know uh, for now we have our four slices now the other mode uh, which is probably going to be the m most useful mode is the threshold mode and in this mode, we uh, manipulate the threshold setting here to uh, get the slices uh, uh, as we wish. So one tip here is to tap, hold and drag left to right to quickly move that threshold setting. Now this mode attempts to find a transient onset for, for, for each part of the sample. And it, it will very much depend on that threshold setting. And again, once I tap on a slice or start editing, uh, we return to manual mode where we can uh, preview and resize and delete uh, slices at will. And if I return to threshold mode and then pull the threshold all the way down to zero, say, and then start increasing it slowly, you'll see that the number of slices starts increasing. But if I pull that back, we can go back to, say, four slices and I can demonstrate something else. Now, as I said before, don't forget these little stepper controls at the bottom here, like the threshold. Uh, if we tap and hold on that and drag left to right, we can quickly change that setting. Now, if I return to manual mode and uh, I zoom in a little bit, I want to demonstrate uh, the snap function. Now, generally, when you um, have a, um, a segment or slice like this highlighted and we try uh, and drag the um, end marker, uh, it moves independently of the next slice. But if we turn on the snap mode down here, uh, you'll notice that when we get close to the uh, beginning of the next slice, it magnetically snaps to that slice. Now, when we release our finger, they get glued together, so they actually now move as one. So it means we can adjust uh, the size of a slice uh, without leaving gaps. Now you can see the slice I've got active here has two beats and if we press the split button the active slice is split into two equal parts. And another thing I don't really demonstrate here is that if snap is enabled and you delete a segment, a slice, the, the previous slice will then fill that space taken by the deleted slice. 
Now tapping on a uh, on a slice uh, selects it so you could use the drag and drop option to drag these slices into other packages but if you want to manually save them just hit the save slice button and this prompts for a, a name it defaults to the same name as the clip with, with the word slices on the end and it actually creates a folder of, of that name uh, with all your slices inside so you're free then to drag and drop them uh, into ex external packages so now you can see how we can split a, a, a sample into various slices. Now what can we do with those slices uh, once we've created them? Well, the simple answer is we can uh, trigger them remotely. And the easiest way to demonstrate this is in standalone mode. Now in this new version, if we tap and hold the MIDI setup button, uh, it will display a MIDI keyboard at the bottom of the screen. If you're in a host package, you want to use a host keyboard. So we tap on the menu at the top left and select launch options. You'll see here a number of MIDI options that we can use to uh, trigger uh, this uh, individual sample I've got here. So in this instance, uh, C1 on channel one will trigger a one shot sample which will play immediately. And I can demonstrate that on this uh, MIDI pop-up keyboard down here. So as you can see, the sample plays immediately on note on. So let's uh, return to the launch options and uh, take a look at a different launch mode. Now that we've, we've got three different launch mo modes to contend with. Uh, that was one shot mode, but let's go to toggle mode. Now in toggle mode, uh, whenever we uh, press a key, it will start the playback. And if we obviously at the end of the sample then stopped automatically. But I put a loop on there and that's playing and one press of that C1 starts the loop. The second press stops the loop and that's toggle mode. And the uh, final uh, mode we've got is gate. Now in gate mode, uh, the sample plays when you press the note and it stops when you release the note. So it's great if you want to stop at precise moments and start at precise moments. Now, these were all carried out in immediate mode. Uh, we also have the ability to start playback on a bar boundary. Uh, I haven't showed you that. Now, if I return to the slices uh, editor, and you take a look at the slice icon, you'll notice a little triangular chevron in the top left corner. That means if we tap and hold that button, uh, we get additional options. And in this case, it's a shortcut to launch options. Now I'm going to change these settings so that uh, the launch mode is set to one shot, but we could equally well have picked any of those modes. Now the one difference between um, standard sample playback and uh, slice playback is that we can now move up from C uh, to C sharp to D to D sharp to playback the individual slices. Now the other great feature added to the slice editor is the ability to stretch uh, samples and this could be very useful when trying to make a sample such as this which is just a series of notes uh, fit um, a known tempo. So it's clear this sample is not 120 beats per minute and we can see that just looking up at the ruler. Um, now there's a quick way of trying to match tempos within this new version of Neon. Now if we press the rewind button, we'll take the cursor back to the beginning of the sample. But if we tap and hold on the uh, rewind button, it'll put the cursor at the end of the sample. Now if you tap on the tempo and just rest your finger on the actual readout for 120 beats per minute or whatever, and drag your finger left and right, you'll see that it, it dynamically changes the, the tempo and we can check that the waveform uh, matches with the ruler and you get a good idea when you're roughly in the right vicinity of the B, BPM. But it's clear that this, this sample does not conform to uh, any known tempo. So we're going to try and force it. And to do that, you can see that I've actually created four slices for the four individual um, uh, strikes of the, uh, of the gong here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to enter stretch mode. And to do that, just click on the uh, stretch action here. And uh, in this mode, we can then resize the various slices and uh, line them up with the ruler. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to drag uh, slice two, the beginning of slice two, and release uh, roughly on the ruler on uh, beat four. And notice when I released uh, the uh, the slice marker, it uh, resized, uh, stretched beat uh, slice one, and compressed slice two. And again here, if I'm dragging this third uh, slice, we can see that it's stretched uh, slice two and compressed slice three. But it's maintained the um, the pitch of the sample. Now obviously slices are different from the actual sample that you're editing and what we're doing here is we're stretching the sample which is affecting the underlying sample that's stored on disk. The slices themselves uh, are only, um, they're stored as part of the session. So if you've loaded as an AUV3, that session contains the slices. So it's just one thing to be aware of. Another thing that we added to this version that might be useful is if you tap and hold on the play button, we actually get a chance to attenuate the output here. Um, this is quite useful if you've got multiple instances running and you want to control that mix. Also, uh, in the if we look at the menu in settings, we now have a, a monitor out option, which allows audio to pass through. Normally when uh, something is playing within Neon, uh, no audio can pass through. So that's just about it for this tutorial on slicing and stretching. Um, now these all appear in version 1.04, so if you don't see the option in your version, it's because you're not on the latest version. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.